All right, step one, year 10. You're going to do this recipe in all different stages. So today you're doing your bayo bun recipe. First thing you're going to do, get your cup of water and add your yeast. Now I'm obviously doubling the recipe for feeding the family. It's just you, you don't need to double it. So in my jug here, I've added my yeast and my salt. And I'm going to leave it here in my tepid water, so warm water. Using a fork or a whisk, whisk it all together. And you leave it for 10 minutes. While, it's, while you're waiting for that, you're gonna get all your flour ingredients for the rest of step one together. Alright, so your next step is to use your frothed up yeasty water and you're going to put it in with your flour. In your flour, you're going to add some sugar and some baking powder. And you're also going to add some oil and some vinegar. And you're going to put it into your floury sugar mix and you're going to mix it and knead it around, mix it in the bowl. And then once it's all combined, knead it on your bench like we do bread doughs. And then you'll put it back into the bowl with a bit of oil in the bowl and leave it for an hour or until it doubles. Tearing off the spoon. Try and bring it together as much as you can in the bowl. That way you'll know straight away if you'll need to add a drop of more water. Okay, so now you're gonna knead it for five minutes until it all comes together. Remember when kneading, pushing it down with the palm and you can fold it over on itself. I am having to stand on my tippy toes to do this just so I can push down hard enough. So slowly you'll just incorporate all those leftover bits that didn't go in originally.
Okay, I've been kneading that for a good eight minutes. So you can see it's all come together. I've taken the crumbs off my bench. Um, it's quite smooth and firm. I haven't added any extra oil or water or anything. It was quite hard to knead, so I did have to um, stand on my tippy toes a lot. All right, so now what you're going to do, using the same bowl you had, that's a good workout. Add a drop of oil, swirl it around. Okay, using, putting your dough in there. Add another little bit of oil, just a drop. Now you're going to leave this until it doubles in size. It can take over an hour. Make sure you put it in a warm spot, cover it with a tea towel, a clean tea towel, and let it sit there for a good hour. Make sure this bowl is going to be full by the time I knock it out and do the next step. So, so far I've done step one. All right, year 10, so our bayo bun dough has been proving and rising. So you can see it's doubled, more than doubled in size. I've left this for a few hours because so, I did this dough early this morning. Um, so what you're going to do now is knock it back. You can do it in your bowl and bang it out. Now your recipe says to punch it down and put it on a floured surface so you can grab a little bit of flour. You might not need much, so that's up to you. A bit of floured surface roll it out it says divide into 16 now remember i doubled the recipe so obviously i'm going to get a lot more than 16. you're going to roll it into if you cut it into 16 or 32 however many you doubled it to i cut in half so you can do it two ways i'll do 16 one way 16 the other Shape it into a ball like you would a cookie dough. Try and get it all back together. It's fallen apart while you've done your... So roll. Now it says to roll to 11 centimetres by four, by nine centimetres, sorry. 11 centimetres by eight centimetres and four millimetres thick. So that means you need to, on your little floured surface, you flat it down and you're using your rolling pin. You're obviously you're going to gauge to get a circle. And you're trying to get a nice circle out of that. Best you can. Now you gotta get about four, so obviously that's a bit thick still, so it's about four mil. So I'm just pushing with my rolling pin turning it every now and then. All right, so we're going to have to roll them all out, put them on lime baking trays. So put some baking paper down. And you're going to roll them all out and then you're gonna to have to prove them again. So there's one way of doing it. And then the other way is you can roll it out as a whole big piece. trying to get it formula thick. So you can see I'm just flipping it every now and then. 
so I know it's not going to stick to my bench. And each time I do turn it, I turn it the opposite way so you can see I'm getting a square. I don't just keep rolling it out. And making it just one big long rectangle. So try and make sure it's even so as you're pushing pushing evenly if you're doing it this way with a rolling pin then you're going to get a cookie cutter this is the biggest one I have and you can cut it so if you dip it in a bit of flour it will help and then you've got a nice circle and then you can repeat that step If you give it a little shake and twist, it'll help come undone. And you can dip your cutter in a bit of flour and that'll also help. Let's prepare another tray. Then you're going to obviously roll all this out again. Now I'm going to do that with all of these because I think it's a much quicker way of rolling it all out. So you can just put all your dough back together. And again. I'm not being too heavy on with the flour. I don't want it too dry. And if you don't have a cookie cutter, a big one, see if you've got like a big cup you could use, like a glass that has a thin like edge that might help cut it. Might be difficult with a mug, but you can always try. Um, whatever size cutter you do use, try and be consistent and make them all that size. Okay, you can see it's starting to get really tough for me to work. So what I might do, I'm gonna get a smaller cutter, maybe a couple size smaller. Let's see if this works. Cut it. You can see it's heaps a bit higher, like thicker.
right, and then you've got a little bit more you can use to roll out if you want to do the last bit. All right, so you're going to now, next step. So you've done step one and step two. Step three said using some oil, brush over the dough, then put a chopstick, a grease chopstick in the middle to show a fold and then slide the chopstick out and then you prove it for 30 minutes. So I'll demonstrate what that all means. So you've got your bit of oil here using a pastry brush. You're going to just brush it with a bit of oil. And it also says put oil. Make sure it's greased. So you're going to fold over. Let me do it. One of these ones that so makes it easier for you to see. Fold over, put your chopstick in the middle, slide the chopstick out. Now another way you could do it is you fold it over and say you don't have the oil. And you get small pieces of parchment paper, your baking paper, and you put that in the middle there. If you don't want to add heaps of oil. And you can put another piece underneath and then it goes in the steamer like that. So you're going to let it rest again for quite a while. I think it's 30 minutes and then they'll double in size again. So I'm just going to repeat that what I did for all of them. Now your recipe says to leave that, as I said before, for half an hour until they get bigger in size. All right, your next step is to start your vegetable and meat prep. So first thing it says is to prepare your carrots. Um, these are the biggest carrots I've ever seen. So you're gonna peel your carrot. Now it does say to um, finely shred it. Now that obviously means you can grate it or peel it like with long strips. It's up to you how you'd like to do it. I'm just going to use the grater. So that's obviously my rubbish bowl for my rabbits and they'll get my carrot leftovers. Then using your grater, the big piece, you're going to grate it.
because this is such a big one, I'm only going to do the one carrot. So obviously be careful of the sharp bits. And then that goes in the wash. Now in your bowl, you are going to, I guess, pickle your carrot. So you've got some vinegar left from what you didn't use in your um, dough earlier. So it says place the remaining vinegar over your carrot and some sea salt. It says two teaspoons. Obviously, you just toss it through and then you're just going to cover it and let that pickle. And leave that for half an hour like your um, bayo bun dough. But... All right, your next step is to marinate your pork. Now, if you don't want to use pork, you obviously don't have to. You can substitute it for any other meat. But um, I'm using pork fillet. So I've given this a quick wash. I'm going to give them another wash after I trim these bottom bits off. Now I'm just trimming those little bits off. And I'm going to keep those and plant them in my garden. Then I'm just going to peel off any of these loose ones here of the shallot. And put it in my scrap bowl for the animals. And then just give that another quick rinse just to get any dirt off because you don't want to be obviously eating dirt. I'm just going to give my board a flip too, just in case there's any dessert, dirt left on here from when I have my shallot on there. So I don't contaminate and make anyone sick. So it says finally slice your shallots. So obviously you can see I've curled my fingers, holding my onion, thinly slicing it on an angle. Now if you don't have shallot and you just want to use normal onion, that's fine. My next step is to cut my um, pork fillet. Now I've just got the lean ones and I bought two. But again, you can substitute it with chicken or beef or whatever you want. But obviously, traditionally, it's done with pork. And now it says cut pork through the center and then cut on a diagonal. So through the center. And then cut into strips. Try not to make the strips too big. And obviously, if you've got a big piece of sinew like that, you might want to cut that off. Sorry, as I was saying, the strips try and do it the same size. Um, these are would be one piece per bayo bun kind of thing. Don't don't make them too fat. Try and make them consistent so they like cook consistently and evenly. 
So if you do them one thick and one thin, obviously one might be a bit more underdone than the other. Just gonna try and chop that off. Obviously, this little trim me bits you can give to your animals or rubbish, whatever, and then wash all this up, and then we'll do the marinade. Okay, after you have finished cutting up your pork, you're going to make your marinade for it, which you could put on halfway through cooking. I've just cleaned up and I've done all my washing up, so now in a jug, you're going to put in your hoisin sauce. comes out. You're going to add your sesame seed oil. Because I've got the one lot of measuring spoons, I'm going to do my flour first, my corn flour, just so I don't put a wet thing in my dry. my honey and then some spice. Now, as I says to put in a third of a cup of water into the jug. And it says whisk that all around, obviously to make sure that um, corn flour is all broken up. As I said, just to preheat a pan. Now I've decided to use the electric wok just so it's easier to film. So you gotta heat that, it says quite high. And then I've just added a bit of oil and a bit of salt over the pork. Just gonna give it a little toss. And you're gonna do it a bit at a time. So you're gonna cook a bit. When it's a bit golden, you're gonna take it out and put it into another bowl and you're gonna do this in batches. A bit of oil and salt I've added to this. 
Now once your pan's hot, you'll feel the heat come off. Now you can do it in a fry pan or a wok. That's up to you. So you can put one in your hear a sizzle if it's not ready, obviously. Don't put it in yet. Now being it's a wok, it's obviously hot and it's a fast cooking. Now you can use some tongs on a wooden spoon just to take it all around. Try not to let it sit on each other and spread it around during through throughout the pan. Now once it's golden, this is going back in the pan, so don't stress if it's not cooked all the way through. If there's some pink little bit still. We'll go back in when we throw the marinade in, the dressing in. So now you're going to throw everything back in there, all of that pork. Give that marinade another whiff. Tip it over.
once you can see the sauce is thickened, throw it in the back of the spoon and turn it off and take it out of your wok or fry pan. If you have a little bit of sauce left in here, you can pour it over. Okay, now clean up your wok. Alright, so you've got everything prepared that is in the recipe. The next thing to do is to prepare your steamer. Now, I've got a Chinese bamboo steamer. Um, you can use just your normal steamer and I'm going to, like a metal one, I'm going to do it over the wok because I have that out and I gave it a good wash. So in your wok, turn it on. You're going to put water in there. Make sure you put it un enough that it sits under it. You don't want the bamboo basket actually touching or submerging. So you can see it and make a gauge, like gauge how far. Uh, you might see, some of you might have the metal um, stand that comes with the woks. Obviously, I don't have that anymore because it's a very old wok. So um, I've got two of these baskets. Now one's the bamboo one and one has a bit of plastic on it. Try not to use that one on the bottom because you can see what happens, it melts. So that's why I'm going to stick that one on top. So while that heats up and warms up, I'm going to prepare my baskets. So what you need to do, you can put a whole piece of grease proof down and just cut a cartouche, like a circle, or you can make them an individual size for your actual bayo bun. So you're going to have to cut them with some grease proof paper into some squares. Now only cut, cook what you're going to eat. They don't have a good shelf life. So if you want to cook a couple now and then have some more later, steam them and then put it aside for later. So I'm going to put some six, so I can fit three obviously nicely. I'm not sure. This is the um, cheaper grease proof paper. So I'm just going to give it a little spray, just in case. Um, now my bare buns have doubled in size, so I'm just going to sit it over the top of that greased paper. So i put that there. Then I'll get the next one organized. You can hear my water is on sizzling. Again, just to be safe. Now be careful of the steam and you're going to put that on your steamer like that, like you'd see at your Chinese restaurants. And you're going to cook that for eight minutes. So while that's cooking, you can see I've just pushed it to the side. What other options you've got to add for flavouring? So after you've got carrot and you've got your pork. But if you don't like carrot and pork and you want to add other stuff, I've washed, obviously, a cucumber is very nice in Chinese dishes. So cut in half. And then you're going to cut it on the angle. Very 
nice and even. You can also add to add a bit of colour, some capsicum if you've got it. Cutting around. You don't waste anything. Cutting that white bit out, watching your fingers. Give that to the rabbits. Um, if you're nice, really sharp, you can go through the shiny end. If your right knife is blunt, go through the um, that end. You can hear my knife needs to sharpen because you're kind of having to force it through. Okay, another option is some lettuce. You can chop up your own iceberg or go grab some herbs from the garden. There you go. Now we're just going to let it cook and then we'll put it together. Okay, it has been eight minutes. You can see they have doubled and then some. So you can turn it off. Please keep an eye on the water underneath. Now this is gonna be hot, so. If the water's evaporating too quickly, you might have to obviously lift them up and top it up. Now I'm gonna present one and show you how to fill them up. So they're just sitting in there, but it's off. I'll do the big one, how about that? So take the paper out and then you are going to fill it with all of your toppings. So you've got your pork, you've got salad if you wanted to put that on there and then you've got your carrot that we pickled. And then you're going to repeat that. And there you go, guys. You've got three big bayo buns in three different sizes here. Um, if you want to add some Japanese mayo to it, you can. And if you obviously want to add any other dressings to change it up, you're more than welcome to. Good luck, guys.